Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. Representing His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the 31st Arab Summit in Algeria, His Majesty the King's Special Representative, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, arrived in Algeria. Upon arrival, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed was received by the Algerian Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman, Arab League Secretary General Abdel Abdel Ghul, the Algerian Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ramtin Lamamra. The Minister of Public Works, Hydraulics and Basic Infrastructure, Lakda Rakta. Algerian Ambassador to Bahrain, Abdul Hamid Koja. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani. And Bahraini Ambassador to Algeria, Fouad Sadiq Al Bahana. Upon arrival, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed issued a statement in which he expressed pride in representing His Majesty the King in the Arab Summit, extending thanks and gratitude to Algerian President Abdul Majid Dabon for the invitation to attend the summit. His Highness stressed Bahrain's keenness led by His Majesty the King on supporting pan-Arab action and developing cooperation which would contribute to bolstering Arab interests and tackling regional and international challenges. His Highness highlighted the issues featuring on the agenda of the summit which aimed to support pan-Arab cooperation. He wished the summit every success to reinstate pan-Arab solidarity consolidate Arab joint action and achieve the aspirations of Arab countries and peoples. The Special Representative of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, paid a visit to Iraqi President Dr Abdul Latif Jamal Rashid at his residency in Algeria. His Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the Iraqi President and their wishes of success to the Iraqi people and further progress and prosperity to his country. The meeting reviewed the fraternal relation between Bahrain and Iraq and affirmed coordinating efforts to develop ties and enhance collaboration across various fields for the benefit of both brotherly countries and people. The meeting also exchanged views on topics on the Arab Summit agenda, which commences today and affirmed the importance of the summit and its outcomes in reinforcing and solidifying joint Arab action at all levels within the framework of Arab cooperation and solidarity in confronting regional and international challenges that threaten the security and stability of the Arab world and hinders its joint action. The Special Representative of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, received Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Makati. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak reviewed with the Lebanese Premier the fraternal relations between Bahrain and Lebanon and means to develop them for the benefit of both countries and the brotherly people. The meeting also exchanged views on topics on the Arab Summit agenda, which commences today in Algeria, and stressed on working within the framework of achieving solidarity between Arab countries and contribute to advancing joint Arab action in various fields. The Special Representative of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, visited the Tunisian President Kai Said. His Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the Tunisian President and their wishes of success to the Tunisian people and further progress and prosperity to his country. The meeting reviewed the fraternal relations between Bahrain and Tunisia and affirmed coordinating efforts to develop ties and enhance collaboration for the benefit of both brotherly countries and people. The meeting also exchanged views on topics in the Arab Summit agenda, which commences today 
and affirmed the importance of the summit and its outcomes in reinforcing and solidifying joint Arab action at all levels within the framework of Arab cooperation and solidarity to enable them to confront regional and international challenges. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure with the victory of his Kamal Takrid at the Saudi Olympic and Paralympic Committee Kamal Cup held in Saudi Arabia. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that this new Bahraini victory is an international event, embodies the level of the Kamal sport and the prominence of Bahraini participations in major championships. He added that the championships that are held in Saudi Arabia always witness high competitiveness in various rounds, which affirms the wide participation from various countries, hailing the achievement. تغريد الكوس بحريني الكوس بحريني الكوس بحريني مع تغريد 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 تحلق بنوموس يود الشوط والكوس إلى مملكة البحرين مع تغريد واندفاع التغريد سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد بن عيسى الخليفة تانينا والنوموس لحلو هذا الفوز وعلى هذا the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronised the inauguration ceremony of the new mechanised farms of the General Poultry Company. In the presence of the Electricity and Water Affairs Minister, Wal bin Nasser Al Mubarak, several officials, business owners and guests. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed the continuation of efforts to enhance the sustainability of food security, ensure the adequate quantities of local produce that meets consumer preferences, and enhance self-sufficiency to meet the goals of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty the King. He said that all initiatives are launched by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, aim at supporting local production by decreasing dependency on imported food items and meeting local demand, in addition to empowering the private sector to play a central role in the food security dossier through its active and successful partnership with the public sector. He commended the General Poultry Company on transforming its operations from conventional farming to advanced farming with systems that utilise latest equipment and technologies that contributed to the extensive automation of the company's production lines, which had a positive impact on the quality of the products and the speed of processes. Sheikh Khalid explained that food security is one of the priorities being monitored and implemented by the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects in coordination with the Ministry of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, keen on following up on the allocation of plots for investments in food security projects. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the Board, Administration and employees of the General Poultry Company for their efforts in reinforcing food security. His Holiness Pope Francis thanked His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the visit he will be making to Bahrain on November the 3rd to the 6th and all those who made it possible. As he spoke to the people gathered in St Peter's Square, he said that he will leave on an apostolic visit to Bahrain. He expressed thanks to His Majesty the King, the authorities, the brothers and sisters in faith and all the people of the country, especially those who have been working for a long time in the preparation for this visit. The Pope said that the 39th Apostolic Journey, which will take him to Bahrain, would be a journey under the sign of dialogue and that he would take part in a forum centred on the necessity for East and West to meet more closely for human coexistence. He said that he will have the opportunity to talk to religious representatives, especially Muslims. The Holy Father is now mentioning his apostolic voyage to Bahrain, which will begin in two days. I want to greet and thank the authorities there and the faithful. Especially those who have been preparing for this visit. It will be uh, a visit about dialogue. Uh, 
I'll have the opportunity to deal with representatives of other religions. I ask everyone to accompany with prayer so that every encontro will be uh, a profitable uh, occasion to, to sustain the name of God, and but also for fraternity and peace, which of which we have extreme need. On November the 4th, Bahrain will host the 16th meeting of the Muslim Council of Elders, coinciding with the historical official visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to Bahrain, an invitation of His Majesty the King, and the inauguration of the Bahrain Forum for Dialogue, East and West, for Human Coexistence, under the patronage of His Majesty the King. The meeting will be chaired by His Eminence Grand Imam Sheikh of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmed al tayeb in the presence of His Holiness Pope Francis. The meeting will review global challenges, including climate changes. The Secretary General of the Council of Muslim Elders and the Higher Committee for Human Fraternity, Councillor Mohammed Abdul Salam, stressed that the meeting symbolises the relationship between leaders and followers of different religions. The Cardinal Secretary of State Pietro Palolin expressed gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for extending an invitation to His Holiness Pope Francis to visit Bahrain on November the 3rd to the 6th. In an interview with Lucifer's Attore Romano and Vatican Radio Vatican News, he noted that the message coming out of this forum and the Holy Father's participation is a sign of unity at a particularly delicate, complex moment in history adding that it is an invitation to dialogue, an invitation to encounter between East and West in a reality such as that of Bahrain, which is a multi-ethnic, multicultural and multi-religious reality, which reflects the ability to live together and the ability to collaborate even in a composite reality such as that which characterises the country. He praised Bahrain's respect for the Christian community in it, noting that His Holiness the Pope will meet with this community. He noted that the Cathedral of Our Lady of Arabia, which was inaugurated a year ago, is proof of the respect enjoyed by Christians in Bahrain. He hailed the diplomatic relations between Bahrain and the Holy See that began in 2000. Parolin also affirmed that the Bahraini constitution establishes respect for human rights in the kingdom, guarantees the promotion of peaceful coexistence and rejects discrimination. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr Sheikh Khaled bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa highlighted Bahrain's humanitarian approach and values globally and positioned the Kingdom as a model for peaceful coexistence and freedoms. Dr Sheikh Khaled said that for centuries Bahrain has enjoyed freedom of worship for all religions without exception thanks to its leadership, their vision and the importance of peaceful coexistence in creating a promising future. The chairman highlighted the historical tolerance and freedom of worship and belief practiced in the kingdom, including allowing the construction of a Hindu temple since 1819 and building churches. He said that His Majesty the King began to highlight Bahrain internationally as a model of religious tolerance in 2001 when he directed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to adopt the proclamation of the United Nations Year of the Dialogue among Civilizations. He pointed out the global status Bahrain has reached thanks to His Majesty the King and for that His Holiness Pope Francis accepted His Majesty's invitation. Dr Sheikh Khaled added that the visit of His Holiness Pope Francis has many meanings and is of importance to understand tolerance and its values in the hearts of millions of people and represents a positive response to Bahrain's leadership in coexistence, pluralism, freedom of belief and acceptance of others. His Holiness Pope Francis will arrive in Bahrain upon the invitation of His Majesty the King on Thursday and the Principal of Sacred Heart School in Bahrain, Sister Rosalind Thomas, stressed that it would be a historical event for Bahrain, especially for the Christian community. She went on to highlight the freedom to practice religion with no hindrance thanks to the benevolence and graciousness of His Majesty the King and the Government of Bahrain. As uh, His uh, Holiness Pope Francis is getting ready to visit Bahrain. I know it's going to be a very historical and great event that is going to happen to Bahrain. And of course, he is coming with the invitation from His Majesty. So that itself shows that how open-minded he is. And it is very important for our Christian community here because Christian community, as I see, has been playing a very major role in this country in different ways. Uh, 
though it is a Muslim country, but then we, we have got a full freedom in practicing of our religion. And uh, we found there are no restrictions that are set aside that we should not worship or something like that. So that full freedom that is given and it is uh, the benevolence and graciousness of His Majesty to donate the land for the church here and again the church in Awali and uh, full support he has given in building of the cathedral. So that itself shows that uh, how great-minded he is and over that now he has invited him to come. And it's, it's going to be a great milestone for the Catholic Church and the Christian community here because His Holiness is going to come visit us and then uh, he's going to ask and see and how the Christian community function here. So I think uh, it will bring about the great changes in the mind of people and from this religious coexistence I think uh, it's going to bring about the great blessings to all Christians as well as others. And uh, also he will be addressing this King Hamad uh, Global Center program. So I think uh, it is a great milestone that we are all waiting so eagerly and uh, all of us are very excited about it. And uh, he will also be visiting the school. He will meet the youth in the school. And uh, the focal point of uh, his visit to the youth and meeting with the youth is that it's not just the Christian youth, but then we will also be having Bahrainis and even other religion youth who will be there. So even students are really excited to meet him, to see what a message he has for them. So it's all going to be something great. Amazing. All of us are looking forward to it. This is, I think, the need of the hour, where people learn to understand the importance of how to live in peace. Because you know, nowadays, uh, the generation that is coming up, they are becoming more selfish. Like, me first, only then the others. But then, what we need to teach them is that the others first and myself after that. So I think this sort of a program can help the future generation and uh, perhaps I should uh, invite you all to the school to speak more about all these things to the children. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Azaid Alziani, met with Israeli Finance Minister Avigdor Lieberman during the official visit of the Bahraini delegation to Israel. The meeting discussed topics of common interest. The two sides reviewed bilateral relations and ways to strengthen Bahraini-Israeli cooperation in all fields, especially economy, investment and joint job opportunities in promising sectors. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Azaid Alziani, visited the Earl Marguerite Centre and met with the founder and executive chairman at JVP and Margulit Startup City, Earl Margulit. They toured JVP and reviewed programs and projects implemented by the company and the centre in many fields, including technology and education. The Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Ali al Khaid, affirmed that the authority worked continuously to develop the national system for suggestions and complaints at Tawasul and improve its technical services to enhance the support and existing communications between the government agencies, citizens and residents. He indicated that a series of new developments and advantages will be added to the system, which will be announced soon. He affirmed the keenness of all ministries and government agencies to join the Tawasul system. He also indicated that the system and the advantages it provided contributed to encouraging and motivating various government agencies to develop their expertise and skills to optimally deal with the received various inquiries and complaints. A record number of representatives of civil society institutions in Bahrain and the National Institution for Human Rights will participate in monitoring the 2022 parliamentary and municipal elections. This large number reflects the keenness of all components of society to ensure the smooth conduct of the electoral process with all transparency and integrity. More in this report. The large number of candidates in the parliamentary and municipal councils elections confirmed that the electoral process and the transparency of all oversight branches have encouraged citizens to actively participate in the democratic process. More than 11 civil society associations submitted requests to monitor the 2022 parliamentary and municipal elections, bringing the number to more than 440 monitors with the aim of increasing confidence and activating partnership in this political process. 
This constructive partnership comes with the participation of those interested in monitoring the oversight work of the electoral process through field follow-up of the electoral process and collecting information objectively to verify the proper application of procedures and detect any violations under the supervision of the judicial authority. The Kingdom of Bahrain will soon witness a democratic celebration represented in holding the 2022 parliamentary and municipal elections for the sixth legislative term, which allows candidates and voters to use their constitutional right as citizens. The Ministry, in coordination with the Legislative and Legal Opinion Commission, has moved the ballot boxes from the starting point to the electoral headquarters with the participation of all relevant security agencies. The Ministry of Interior, under the directors and leadership of its Minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, was keen to intensify security during the conduct of the electoral process.